first fundamental area. What is to define what chemistry is? So chemistry is the study of matter and the changes it undergoes, and then the associated energy of those changes. So what we're looking at is talking about stuff changing stuff from one form to another, and then following the energy that those transitions take place. So first let's define this hierarchy, this arrangement of different kinds of stuff. <clears throat> the first thing we're going to talk about is matter. We said chemistry is the, the study of matter, so matter is really anything that takes up space and has a mass. So desks, pencils, you and I, Everything that takes up space and has mass, we're classifying as matter. So when we talk about studying chemistry, we're pretty much talking about studying everything. Maybe we're looking at very small level or very high detail of that, but we're talking about studying just about anything. We're also trying to make the transition from what happens on an atomic level, very small level, to changes that you and I can see. So that's where a lot of our discussion is going to be about over the course of the semester, is looking at how do the things that we see on a large scale, how do those relate to individuals' very small scale interactions? <clears throat> and when we talk about matter, matter typically comes in three different what we call phases. You can see here in the slide we have the solid phase, which is what we think of the solid, the desks, ice, anything that's solid. We have liquids. Those things are fairly loosely held together so they move around, the, the molecules, the, the smaller units actually can flow around each other, they don't have a definite volume, but they, they sort of fill whatever container, we're all familiar with liquids. And then the final state here is this, these gases, think about air as a prime example of gas, where the, the smaller units themselves are placed very far apart from each other, there's a lot of empty space, their move, molecules themselves are moving fairly rapidly, they're usually harder to see <clears throat> because those, those molecules themselves or the smaller units are distributed so largely. <clears throat> we can sort of break into matter into these two very simple classifications. We have what we call pure substances, which we can't break down any further without actually changing what they are. So they're the simplest talk about the distinctions between those two things, but they're pure substances. We can't break them down further without changing. And then we have, behind me here, we have mixtures, which are a combination of these pure substances. So we mix the two together. Those are distinctions. Something that can't be broken down any further or something that can be, which we'll call a mixture. So if we look at the mixtures then, mixtures we can think about as having two basic general types. We have a heterogeneous mixture, which is a mixture that looks different if we scan different areas of that mixture. So you think of something like sand, for example, where you see distinct grains of different types of material. That would be an example of a heterogeneous mixture. A homogeneous mixture is going to be a mixture that is the same throughout that mixture. So we think of something like milk or coffee that no matter what portion of that mixture you're looking at, it's going to appear to be the same. So the difference between the heterogeneous and the homogeneous is that there's distinct areas where there's differences within the broader scope. Right? <clears throat> so we can think of an example of a heterogeneous mixture I thought about was like a swirl ice cream cone, right? where you can see both of them may be ice cream, but there's distinct differences in the region of those areas you're looking at. You can tell those different regions apart. If we look at the other, the pure substances, they break it down into what we consider elements, those things which are listed on the periodic table, that are their simplest form. We can't break those down any further. We can combine those elements into compounds. Right? We can't break up, we take some process to break those apart, so they're not mixtures. They're a combination of elements which we would classify as a pure substance. We can have something like water, for example. If you look at pure distilled water, that is a compound. You can't break the water apart anymore without into its elements, so it's not traditionally a mixture. <clears throat> to go from a mixture into these pure elements, since we're taking these mixtures of compounds and elements, we can change those by some physical change. It's a change, a physical change we can classify as something that has a change in the properties, but not the composition. So if you're thinking about coffee, for example, we can take out the caffeine and 
some of the other material, we separate those out, we haven't changed the, the make makeup of the coffee, we've just sort of separated those materials. It's a physical change. We're not actually changing the composition, we're just sort of separating those. On the other hand, if we look at these pure substances, we can break apart these compounds into the elements using what we call a chemical change. So these chemical changes are signify we change not only the properties but also the composition what those actual things are a lot of the times we discuss that physical changes are prime or can be more likely reversible so if you think about ice melting good example of a physical change that ice melting can be reversed you can refreeze ice we're just changing the properties of that material we're not changing what it's made of where we could also break apart that water molecule into its components of hydrogen and oxygen, very different things, going to have very different properties, and it's going to behave very differently. So that would be an example of a chemical change. <clears throat> so when we study these, we're going to sort of go between these things, trying to underlie the principles of these elements and compounds by monitoring both physical and chemical changes.